Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 30. Most of you who've been following this should have left your wild card and your bench boost. This week we're going to use the wild card. I'm going to start by looking at a chart that Ben Crellin's put on Twitter where he shows the confirmed fixtures and the predicted fixtures and explain what our strategy is and then we'll look at how the players did last game week and then what the players are that we can wildcard with. Ben Crellin posted this screenshot from his Excel chart showing the 20 teams in the Premier League and the remaining nine game weeks we have. So the game weeks are across the top, the teams are down the side and the first seven teams in the list have all got confirmed doubles in game week 34. And then the next six are likely to have a double in game week 37. And then the remaining seven don't have any double game weeks at all. And then Chelsea and Tottenham have got an extra double game week, probably in game week 36. But Tottenham don't have any games in game week 34. So Sun, for example, Tottenham midfielder, very popular. Lots of people are going to have him, but he's not going to be playing in game week 34. So we're going to wildcard this game week for game week 30. So you can totally change your team. We're going to get through game week 34. Probably not going to be able to get 11 doublers out. You can get 11 doublers out, but that may not be the best configuration for your team. Then we're going to bench boost in game week 37. I've already burnt my bench boost weeks ago, but most of you are still have your bench boost. I'm recommending you use that in game week 37. And so you're going to get 15 players out and a good number of those will have a double game week. So there's a number of teams on here where we no longer have any players from them. So at the bottom you've got, you can't see it, I'm covering it up, but Burnley, Luton, we've got no players from them anymore. Forest, we have no players. Fulham, I think we've got two. Brentford, none. So there are good players like Tony that are no longer in the system, but that's to do with when the fixtures fall, basically. And I'm trying to navigate through this. We are going to be taking hits in the last nine game weeks but we're aiming for the top 5%, and I think we can afford to do that, so we'll be all right. I think we've got one West Ham player. I think we've got one Villa player. I think we've only got one Villa player, and that would be Watkins. So Watkins in the next five game weeks is home to Wolves, Brentford, Bournemouth. They're all very nice fixtures. But after that, of course, he has no double game weeks, and his fixtures include Chelsea, away to Brighton, Liverpool, and then away to Palace. So... If you decide to get Watkins and you absolutely don't need to buy him, he is quite expensive and there are lots of good forwards to choose from. But if you do, you'll probably sell him either after game week 30 before the Man City or after game week 32 or after game week 34. You're unlikely to hold Watkins for the rest of the season, but you might. So that's Watkins. Uh, Newcastle, although they don't double till game week 37, they have some nice fixtures leading up to that. So we have Newcastle players, United are great we have no Brighton players in the system we've only got a couple of Man City Tottenham we have some Tottenham players we need to be aware they're not playing in 34 of course but we're not bench boosting so we can afford to have obviously up to three Tottenham players and just have them on the bench if we like but we'll probably want charity players on the bench as well because they're away to Arsenal in game week 34 we have no Sheffield United players because they're just not worth having I think we've got one Everton, got a couple of Wolves. We have no Palace players, but when we get near the double, we may well introduce a couple because they've got two home fixtures. But leading up to that, I didn't want to have any Palace players in here because I didn't want you buying them because there are better players to buy between now and the double in 34. I think we've only got one Bournemouth player now and we've got obviously Arsenal and Liverpool. So Arsenal and Liverpool, they double in game week 34. And Liverpool have got nice fixtures up to them. Arsenal have got mostly nice fixtures up to them. So we probably want to be getting in five or six players in total from Arsenal and Liverpool. Hope that made sense. If it made no sense, don't worry about it. <laughs> Just watch the rest of the video and choose players that I'm showing you that you're allowed to buy. So game week 29, most of us free hit. And we had a small selection of players to choose from. And it went down in history as the lowest ever average score for FPL so, so it really didn't go very well but hopefully most of you got green arrows on this anyway so for the goalkeepers Leno 7 Martinez 5 Ariola 3 the rest did nothing for the expensive defenders they did absolutely nothing 
The cheaper defenders, Robinson 11, the rest did nothing. For the expensive midfielders, absolutely nothing. So very funny. Yeah. I was laughing quite a lot the weekend because I was highly amused by the scores. Even though I was doing badly. The cheaper midfielders, Gibbs White 7, Awobi 3, the rest nothing. The expensive forwards, well we only had one page of forwards. That was Munez 13, for Fafana 8 and the rest nothing. Right, we'll now look at the players that we got for the wildcard for game week 30. Starting with the goalkeepers, Becker, he was in the system, he's out now. He will be back before the end of the season, at least he's expected to be, and we may well reintroduce him, but for now, he's out the system because I don't need buying him. Don't buy Edison. There are better goalkeepers to choose from, even though Edison may get some good clean sheets. So Vicario's a new entry, he's the Tottenham keeper, and he doubles in game week 37. He does blank in 34, but that just means you'll play your other keeper. So if you want to buy Vicario, he's absolutely fine. Raya, very, very good goalkeeper. The only downside with Raya, and it's a big downside, is you can only have three Arsenal players. And if you have Raya, that means you've only got two left in your 10 outfield players. But it may be the way you set your team up, you want Raya, and that's fine. Leno, even though they're not doubling, he's actually quite a good keeper, but he is quite expensive. Onana doubles in 37, Neto doubles in 34, Pickford I believe doubles in 34, but he's uh, he's a lot of fun, you know that I like him. The cheaper keepers we've got, Flecken is out, Petrovic, Chelsea keeper, it looks like he's currently the first choice keeper for Chelsea, we can't guarantee he's going to keep it as first choice, so if you buy him there's a slight risk he may not get all the games when it gets near the end of the season. But then he may get all the games. If he does get all the games, then he'll be doubling in game week 37 and likely to double in, double in game week 36. So an advantage of Petrovic or Vicario, the Tottenham keeper, is you should get two double games, 36 and 37. Sanchez is the Chelsea keeper we did have in the system. He's not playing, so he's out. Kamansky, the Luton keeper's out. Johnston, he's injured. Palace keeper, out. Ariola, he may be the only grey player I've got in the system now as bench fodder. He plays, he plays every week. He's okay. He's only 4.3. There are better keepers you can choose from. But if you want to get into your team, maybe Haaland and Son and Salah, you are going to have to have some cheaper players. And if you had to have Ariola, he is okay. Dubravka have made blue. So he's the Newcastle keeper, but Pope is expected to be back in a few weeks. So if you buy Dubravka, by the end of the season, it's likely he won't even be playing. So you will be selling him, but he's only 4.2 and he may help you in the short term. And the next two fixtures, home West Ham, home to Everton, he could get a clean sheet. And then Kelleher, the Liverpool keeper, until Becker's back, would expect him to be playing. And the next four fixtures include home to Brighton, home to Sheffield United and home to Crystal Palace. He could get three clean sheets then, and he's very cheap. But like Dubravka, the expectation is by the end of the season, he won't be playing, so you'll need to move him on anyway. So if you buy Dubravka or Kelleher, they are cheap, they have immediately some good fixtures, but you're kind of booking in a transfer, probably, for later on. Regarding the expensive defenders, Trent is out. When he's, in, when he's fit again... We'll probably bring him back in, but I've made him as red because I don't need buying him because it's a wasted slot and you need your money. Trippier is marked as injured, but Newcastle do have some nice fixtures, so I'm keeping him in the system. I know he's not done great recently, but I'm still <laughs> keeping him in. By the way, these prices I put in this about two or three days ago, so some of them may have changed slightly. So these are approximate prices now for the players. Saliba's fine. Porro's fine. Tottenham at home to Luton this week. That's nice. Then we've got White. Chilwell's new entry. I think Chilwell's been in the system a couple of times this season. I don't know if you saw the England game a few days ago. He had lots of shots on target for England. And if the goal was 10 times bigger, they still wouldn't have gone in. <laughs> really quite funny. But at least he's having a good time and this is all about having fun. So Chilwell's all right. I don't suppose many of you would buy him, but you may want to have two Chelsea boys at the back. So you can have him... And we've got another defender, or you could have a keeper. Chilwell's all right. Walker, he's out. And as it happens, he got a bit of an injury in the England game anyway. As I said earlier, I think I said it earlier, we don't have many Man City players now. 
Defenders, the cheaper defenders. Gabriel's all right. Udogi's all right. Estupinan is out. Colwell is out and he's injured. Doughty's out. That was a tough choice taking him out. But considering the fixtures and what other defenders we have available, I figured we should lose him. So Aiton Noy is a new entry for Wolves and they have an OK double in game week 34 and he's quite an attacking defender and he's quite cheap. For the cheapest defenders, Konsa is out, Sanessi is out. I'm aware he doubles in game week 34, he may be fit by then, but we've got other players we can choose from, we don't need him. So Gusto is a new player for Chelsea, new to the system. All the time James isn't playing, Gusto should be playing, he's an attacking player, he's only 4.2. If you buy him, you need to be aware that by the time we get to game week 37, you may have to sell him because if James is back, you can't afford to have any players that aren't playing because you're going to play your bench boost. So any players like the blue ones I showed you earlier, the two goalkeepers, if you get them, you have to get rid of them by game week 37 because you're going to bench boost. Branthwaite's nice and cheap and he's all right. Bradley's a very good player, but he's likely to only play the next two, three or four game weeks until Trent is back. So if you buy Bradley, and he's a good player, you're going to have to sell him before the bench boost in game week 37. Lascelles. So we have Botman is injured. For Newcastle, Lascelles is expected to play for the rest of the season, and he's only 3.9. Newcastle have some all right fixtures, and they double in game week 37. For the midfielders, Salah. 13.1 million when I put this together. I don't know if he's gone up yet. He's the only green player I've put in the system. At home to Brighton, at home to Sheffield United, away to Man United, but he often does well there. Home to Palace, very nice fixtures. Presuming he's fit, he's absolutely worth having. He would be more important, I think, than Haaland in the coming weeks. But it's up to you. You choose whichever players you want and you can easily get them both in. De Bruyne is out. He's expensive. We've got other people we can choose from. Sun is very good in the immediate future, but of course he misses game at 34. If you get Sun, you may want to move him on in a few weeks, but it's completely valid to hold him, have him on your bench in game at 34 and keep him for the entire season if you want to. Saka is good. Away to Man City this week, but he's obviously a good player. Odegaard's good. Fernandez is good. <laughs> All season I've been saying Fernandez is good, even when he hasn't been. Foden's good. For the cheaper midfielders... Madison's good, obviously missing game week 34. Bowens, we're getting rid of him. Martinelli, we're getting rid of. Even though Martinelli's quite good, he often doesn't play 90 minutes and we have so many Arsenal players to choose from. I think we can safely move him on. Like Havertz, half a million cheaper and Havertz has been doing better recently. He's playing up front. I think Havertz is actually quite a good buy. Richarlison, presuming he's fit, he's a good player. Sterling, we're getting rid of him. Um, we've just got other players that we can choose from, other Chelsea players. Uh, yeah, he's not worth having. Gordon's a good player. Ward Prowse, very good player, but we're moving out of the system. The cheapest midfielders, Palmer, absolutely worth having. After Salah, he may be the second most important player to have because he's only 5.7 million and they have some nice fixtures coming up. Gibbs White, very good player. I very much like him. But we're not having him in this system, so he's out of here. Rice, a new entry. So he's not going to get as many points probably as Saka, Odegaard or Havertz. But he does take corners. He will get some assists and goals probably between now and the end of the season. And he's only 5.5. So if you're wanting two Arsenal attackers, but you can't afford two of the other three that I've mentioned, Rice could be one of them and he is okay. He chan is out. He's injured anyway. Barkley's out. Garnacho, good player. So the Man United fixtures in the immediate future aren't great from game, but from game week 34, they are quite good. Albeit game week 34 is only a single game week. Neto's out. For the forwards, we've got Haaland. He's not green, but he's a very good player. The safe thing to do is to buy Haaland and Salah, but you don't have to. Watkins, so he's sellable soon. This game week and then two weeks game time and two game weeks after that, the fixtures are very, very nice. I believe he's the highest scoring player in the system. But after that, we may want to move him on. If you don't want to buy him, that's fine. There are lots of managers that are selling him at the moment so they can afford Salah. If you want to keep him for the whole season, that's fine as well. 
So I'm playing my wild card almost certainly this game week, and I'm probably keeping Watkins. But I've not decided yet, but uh, I'm hoping to put a video out later today with what I'm currently intending to do. Tony's out, even though he's a good player. Jesus is out. Isaac's a new entry. So we have Wilson is injured. If Isaac stays fit, he should be first choice striker, of course, for Newcastle between now and the end of the season. They have some nice fixtures coming up. He tends to get a goal most games, so he's a good player. Darwin, Darwin's on eight yellow cards. If he gets two more in the next four or five game weeks, I think it is, then he gets a two-match ban. He probably won't, but it could happen. But if he's fit, and when you do your wild card, you want to take into consideration the flags and you make your own choice, maybe look at some of the press articles, are they going to play or not? I know that he's expected to play. When you look at um, Twitter and what fans are saying, and even what Klopp said, the last I saw, he is expected to play and be okay. So home to Brighton, home to Sheffield United, he could get some very nice points there. Solanke, I'm keeping him in the system because the next few fixes are Everton, Palace, Luton. He could do all right. Hoyland, I very much like him. I'll probably be getting him from game week 34 or 35. I won't buy him just now, but he's a very good striker. For the cheaper forwards, so Jackson's a new entry. We've had him once or twice in the system so far. He is on nine yellow cards and he has to last the next, I think, maybe five games without getting another yellow, or he gets a two-match ban. So there's a reasonable chance he's going to pick up his 10th and miss two games. However, this game week, they're at home to Burnley. In two game weeks' time, they're playing Sheffield United. Jackson's very fast, and he's finally managed, it seems, the last few games, to get an understanding of how to play in Chelsea in the Premier League. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some good points in the next few game weeks if he manages to not get booked. If he gets booked, then you kind of have to sell him. So Jackson's a good buy, but he's a huge gamble because you're probably booking in a transfer in the next week or two. Alvarez is out. Kuna, so I'm bringing him in. He's nice and cheap. He's got a nice double in game week 34. And if you have to play him other game weeks, that's fine as well. Morris is out. Morpay is out, even though I like him. Adibo is out. We've got Munez in here for Fulham. They haven't got any double game weeks, but he is cheap and he's doing very well at the moment, especially in his home games. Archer is out. So the bench order. This is my suggested bench order. And unusually this week, it's feasible nearly any of these keepers could get a clean sheet. There aren't any that are shouting, no chance of a clean sheet here. So they're actually quite close. But the order that I've chosen is... Pickford, if you've got Pickford, I'm suggesting he's on your bench. If you don't have him but you have Raya, he's on your bench. Then it'd be Ariola, Onana, Neto, Leno, Dubravka, Kelleher, Vicario, then Petrovic. With the bench order I'm suggesting and the captaincy choices, they are just suggestions. You just do whatever you like. But if you follow these suggestions, you'll hopefully do all right and finish in the top 5%, which means you'll do all right in your mini leagues. We're now going to look at the rest of the players. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest, is position three in your bench, the next one position two, the last one position one. By chance this week, the first players I'm showing you, I believe, are all defenders. That often isn't the case, but it happens this week because Arsenal are away to Man City. Often the Arsenal defenders will be higher up in the list. So if you've got Branthwaite, I suggest he's on your bench. If you've got Lascelles, he's on your bench. The Nathan Nore, Chilwell, White, Saliba, Gabriel... Udogi, Gusto, Porro, Bradley, Trippier. So these, I believe, are maybe all the defenders in the system now. So that actually means if you have Trippier, Bradley, Porro, you will be playing those. And there's a reasonable chance Trippier won't be fit, in which case it means Gusto is going to come in for you anyway, if you had Gusto. Uh, then we have Kuna, Rice, Havertz, Odegaard, Garnacho, Hoyland, Munez, Gordon, Foden, Saka, Fernandez. Madison, Richarlison, Solanke, Darwin, Jackson, Isaac, Watkins, Harland, Palmer, Sun and Salah. Regarding captaincy, there's quite a wide choice this week. So Salah is a very good choice for captain. I said earlier in the week I thought I might captain Palmer. I may switch that to Salah myself, I'm not sure, but he's a good shout for the old mule hat. Sun is also a very good choice at home to Luton. Palmer is also a very good choice, I believe, at home to Burnley. Any of those three 
are good captaincy choices. Haaland, he can score against anyone. So even though he's playing against the best defence in the league, he could still get goals. He could, st- could still get points. I suspect if you've got two of the four on the screen and one of them's Haaland, you're better off choosing one of the top three, but you don't have to. Jackson and Isaac are also good choices. So I'd suggest you have one of these as your captain, one as your vice captain, but don't choose two from the same team. So don't have Palmer and Jackson. And regarding the background picture, in case you were wondering, this weekend is the um, Oxford Cambridge boat race on the Thames. So I thought I'd do some swans on the Thames trying to play football. Not sure how well they're doing, but that's what the picture is. And there we have it. A lot of thought has gone into the players that we've got in the system. So hopefully it makes sense. You can follow the instructions. And I believe there are enough cheap players there that you can get the main players that you're going to want to have. Uh, Any questions, put them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you enjoy the weekend. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) 